Hello, and welcome to another video of Methuklasan. In this video, I will demonstrate how to conduct t-test independent using Jamovi. The independent samples t-test compares the means between two unrelated groups on the same continuous, dependent variable. And here are the assumptions you must meet before using the test. First, your dependent variable should be measured on a continuous scale. Second, your independent variable should consist of two categorical, independent groups. Third, you should have independence of observations, meaning there is no relationship between the observations in each group or between the groups themselves. Fourth, there should be no significant outliers. Fifth, your dependent variable should be approximately normally distributed for each independent variable group. Lastly, there needs to be homogeneity of variances. Here's an example. A researcher would like to know if playing video games improves cognitive function. So, he decided to compare the cognitive function scores of gamers and non-gamers. The null hypothesis states no significant difference exists between the average cognitive function score of the gamers and non-gamers. In contrast, the alternative hypothesis states that there is a significant difference between the average cognitive function score of gamers and non-gamers. For this example, the scores are ranging from 1 to 100. In the data view of Jamovi, you need to create a column for the independent and dependent variables separately. Row 1 shows that the respondent is a gamer with a cognitive function score 60, while row 22 is a non-gamer respondent with a score of 13. To check for outliers, go to the Analyses, Menu, Exploration, and Descriptives. Drag the independent variable in the variables box and the dependent variable in the split by box. Select the plot drop down panel and choose box plot. In the results window, the box plot shows no outliers because there are no points beyond each plot. If an outlier exists, an external point will show, and the label directs you to the raw where the outlier is. To check the normality of the data in each group, go to the Statistics drop-down panel and select the Shapiro-Wilk under the normality. Note that if the Shapiro-Wilk p-value is greater than 0.05, then the data is normal. Here, the results show that the p-values for the two groups exceed 0.05, so the data sets are approximately normally distributed. By satisfying the first five assumptions, we can now proceed with the test. Go to Analyses, T-Tests, and select Independent Samples T-Test. Transfer or drag the dependent variable in the correct box and the independent variable in the grouping variable box. Check the equality of variance by choosing the homogeneity test under the assumption checks. Note that if the p-value for the Levine's test is greater than 0.05, our group variances can be treated as equal. For this instance, interpret the student's t in the independent sample t-test table. If the p-value of the Levine's test is less than 0.05, then use the Welch's test. In this example, Levine's p-value is less than 0.05, so we will use Welch's test to interpret the results. Since the p-value in Welch's test is greater than 5% or 0.05, we will retain the null hypothesis, 
which states that there is no significant difference between the average cognitive function score of the gamers and non-gamers. Based on the results, we can conclude that playing video games does not necessarily improve cognitive function. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe.